Thank you very much, Ed. You have been here since 2012. Yes. Uh, you have witnessed so many things. Mm -hmm. um, how has your perspective of the Burmese situation changed? Well, I think every year it changes in some fashion. Uh, it, this is a very uh, different atmosphere, a different environment than when I actually first started working the issue as envoy in 2011. Uh, there's, there are many more voices. There are, there, there are debates going on. Um, there's engagement at civil society level and, and uh, with the government and vice versa. Uh, so the atmosphere, the environment has changed. The structure of the society, the structure of the economy, the structure of the political system has not changed. The constitution has not changed. So, but it's, a, it's a different in that way. And that's what's exciting about the election, I think, is you're seeing uh, real campaigning and real debates occurring uh, that really we didn't expect, say, uh, three, four, or five years ago. So that they had said, you know, things need to be changed. What need to do more about this, you know, uh, the realization or real change in this country? Right. Well, I think the constitutional change is very important. It, it, the change to date has been from top down. It's been granted by authorities. But um, real uh, democracy is granted by, by law and by uh, rule of law and from bottom up. So people have rights and they're not just granted uh, the ability uh, to, to speak freely. So free expression, I think, needs to be granted more uh, completely in the society. Uh, I think people need to feel that their, their uh, economic situation is evolving and that they have uh, land rights and control over their, uh, the well-being of their families. Um, these are the types of things that get to the structural aspects of the society. Civilian control of the military is very important. The military's role is still a big question mark. These are things when I talk to people around the country over the past three years, they talk to me about. Okay, reflecting this change, you know, what is the impact on uh, America and Obama relationship so far? Well, we've obviously evolved greatly. In the past, we had uh, we were alienated from each other. We didn't have formal diplomatic relations without an ambassador. Uh, we had a charge here, and I was the first ambassador in more than 20 years. Now we've had the president of the United States here twice, uh, and he. He was the first ever sitting president. Uh, so it's become more normal in that way, in our interaction. Um, and we are absolute supporters of the reform process. Um, but there's still a ways to go to fully normalize. The election will be an important moment uh, in, in this process. But you know, we, we have been on the side of the people of this country for, for a long time. And we will not abandon the people of the country and, and uh, our commitment to ensuring the success uh, of this country uh, for uh, for years to come. So about the, you, as you said, the election will be one of the milestones, you know, about, um, so far you've been witnessing about the election process. It is a complex one. Yes, And indeed. what is U.S. keep an eye on, you know, especially what are the issues that concern with the, uh, to make sure this is a credible election in right. this country? Well, there are many issues and the election commission has had a very difficult task from the beginning. Uh, this is a, a difficult thing to have a high quality election. It requires a great deal of capacity that I think they have, they've had to develop uh, on the run, you know, and it's, we're within a short time of the election. Um, I, there are a number of things we look at. I mean, the voter list issue, obviously, is a big one, and that's a, a very high profile issue for the people of the country. Uh, voter education is very important so that the people here understand uh, their rights as voters and how to actually vote. Um, the questions of advance voting, that was a big issue in 2010, ensuring that advance voting is monitored and fair uh, process. We put out a statement with other missions about the mixing of religion and politics. Uh, we are quite concerned that, the, that elections are naturally uh, divisive moments. There, you know, someone wins, someone loses, and, uh, but that um, certain things are beyond the bounds and division according to religion or ethnicity or anything, race, uh, I think is, is unhelpful, not just for the election, but beyond the election. And then the disenfranchisement of populations and disqualifications of candidates, this is also very important uh, to us as we watch the, uh, how credible the, the result is. So we say inclusive, transparent, and credible. <laughs> uh, and it's important that, um, that the authorities are transparent about the decisions they make, including the evaluation of, of complaints uh, that it's inclusive of a uh, wide variety of people in this country, so the, ref the result truly reflects their will, and then credible in the sense that people look at it and say that reflects what we decided on on election day, and we can then move forward together 
to the next phase, which is the most important thing, is getting on to the hard work of, of truly developing a stable, prosperous, and just society. About the inclusiveness, you know, I think it is not quite very inclusive, you know. Um, look at the ceasefire, there's only eight groups uh, signed, you know, especially in the conflict area. And yes. also some area like in Arkan, they are not included, inclusive, they are excluded from the election. What do you comment on this, you know, particular exclusion of yes. uh, people in the electoral process? Yes, no, we have been very, very concerned about the exclusion of whole populations, the Rohingya, the, the other populations in society. Um, so, and, and the fact that this is not going to be held all over the country, there will be postponed uh, areas because of conflict, because the UEC couldn't get access, they couldn't work on voter lists, they couldn't set up a subcommission. Uh, the issue of advanced voting outside the country is getting much attention, ability of thousands of people, if not millions, to be uh, able to vote uh, for the leadership of their country, even if they're not living here at the moment or present here. Uh, so yes, this, this raises questions about inclusivity, and we'll be watching what uh, observers say and, and what happens on election day and, and beyond. Okay. Also, there is a statement, joint statement, you know, made by U.S. Embassy here and some other embassies about the using a religion during the uh, election campaign. What's your embassy making sure that you know that does not happen and you know it's be prevented that because it is against the constitution. Also, it's yes. no use for everybody. Uh, there is a particular role. What is the U.S. Embassy in Yango doing this? You know, making sure that they are not yeah. not used. Religion is not used for the uh, right. political purpose. Well, it's not the responsibility of a third country to, to do that. I, I mean, this is we promoted that notion as friends of this country, uh, not just the United States, but many other countries and in the United Nations, as, as those who really want to see this country succeed and are partners in the reform process. Um, these divisive elements of using religion in politics or, or dividing people uh, by religious communities uh, is very harmful to the unity and the, and the potential success of this country. Um, so that's what we wanted to speak out on early in the campaign, because look, we have similar problems in the United States. Other countries have this problem. The, the key to answering this and dealing with this will have to come from within. It will have to come from the people of this country who say, I am not going to be divided just because my neighbor is a different religion. We are fellow uh, citizens. We are. We are uh, fellow residents, and, and we are, uh, our, the vision that we, that we have for our country is not one of exclusion, but inclusion and unity. Um, so I hope that as people proceed with the campaign period, they think in those terms, that the government and political parties and other actors um, operate in ways that build tolerance and understanding and unity beyond politics. Um, and, and hopefully there's no res residual impact, no impact after the election of, of uh, forces of division. I think it's very, very harmful. So it really is in the hands of, of the people here to decide what kind of country they want uh, and how they will vote based on that. So U.S. is also, Tata Center is doing the election observation. And what is their role? And you know, what do you uh, expect that they, they are finding? You know, how do we know that? What is they are finding? Uh, yes. Is there any particular standard or any yes. particular issues that they are observing during the election? Can well, you, you explain about their sure. work? Sure. Well, you should talk to the Carter Center directly about their work. They are not affiliated with the, the U.S. government. They are founded by Jimmy Carter, who was a former U.S. president, but it is a private organization that is not connected to the U.S. government. Um, but we listen very closely to what they say. They've worked all over the world in more than 100 countries uh, mm -hmm. observing elections and writing reports about what they see. They provide an objective, a, a, uh, a nonpartisan view based on uh, very practical standards, international standards of how elections are administered, how campaigns are run, uh, how election day is conducted, and how the post-election period uh, proceeds. So we will listen very closely to them. I expect they will have a report out within just a few days of election day, an initial report but they will have to watch the entire process, put together all the information they have, and put out a, a subsequent report maybe several weeks after that. Uh, it's very difficult to see everything and pull it together. They already have put out preliminary reports based on what they've seen during the campaign period, which I would encourage uh, DVB and people all over the country to read um, because it does give a sense of um, the standards that they're looking at, the types of issues that are important to um, a free and fair, or if you want to call it a tr transparent, inclusive, and credible election. 
um, EU election observer, they recently said that they were going to observe some of the army um, uh, pulling boots, you know, and yes. they also they got the permission from the chief commander. Is yes. there any particular, you know, um, uh, uh, observation to the uh, some of the area that you know hold by the uh, army, you know, that yes. the Carter Center has any plan? to upset some of the army pulling boots. You should talk to the Carter Center, but they are very systematic about this. They, they've been here for a while. They've done investigations into the local conditions by constituency, and they do make judgments based on whether this constituency is particularly sensitive or difficult or has controversy or um, you know people need to feel reassurance of uh, observers. Um, so they are very much looking around the country, as, as we are as an embassy, of where these, what we call maybe hot spots for either violence or for impropriety, for um, uh, things that are, are not appropriate in the election, to place people there, to ensure that people are watching. And it's not just important to report on what you see, but it's also a deterrent uh, for those who know that people are watching. Uh, and it can reassure voters in that constituency that people are there watching. That's also the role of the international community, not to give it a thumbs up or thumbs down. And I want to manage the expectations of people of this country. The United States, the international community, will not give a thumbs up or thumbs down categorically to the, to the election. We will, uh, we will explain what we see and provide some uh, analysis of that. But ultimately, the decision on the election will come from the people of the country. And we will, uh, but I think our observation and our contribution uh, can build confidence in the process. And obviously, if there are obvious systematic problems, I mean, very obvious bad problems, then we will call that out and it will have its own effect. I should also say, um, you mentioned the Carter Center, there will be many other observers on Election Day. There are domestic observers, PACE um, is uh, domestic observers, thousands of, of people, of, of citizens of this country will be watching and observing. We as an embassy will have teams out to go to polling stations. I will go to a few places. Well, so will you be there on that day? I, I do intend. Do you have any specific plan? I do have a plan. I'm not sure I'm ready to say what the plan is yet. I will certainly let you know. But I plan to go elsewhere, just a couple places uh, on election day, just because I like to see and talk to people um, about, uh, about what's happening. Uh, some great interest. And I used to do this. You know, I used to work for the National Democratic Institute, which is one of those. They are training the domestic observers here, PACE. I used to work for them, uh, and I enjoy elections. I, I think they're the most, I get energized. I think they're one of the most inspiring things to, to watch. People, you know, uh, oftentimes under hardship, uh, who, who uh, courageously say, I want to be heard. I am going to be heard today. Listen to me, uh, and I'm going to go to vote. The vote is secret, and I'm going to tell the government and the society this is what I think. It's a very... Um, it's a, it's a very profound moment to me, and I, I love watching it, and I do hope people come out and vote and express their voice. My final question would be, you know, uh, inclusive and also credible and transparent yes. election. What need to do more, you know, so far from your comment? What do right. you comment about this? Well, I think transparency is uh, very, very important, again, to build confidence. And uh, we have encouraged the, the Union Election Commission, uh, Foreign Ministry, the Home Affairs Minister, anyone who has a part in this election, to be much more transparent um, in explaining to the media, explaining to the public what they are doing, why they are doing it, so they can provide the real analysis of things. I think the UEC has tried on occasion. I think they've been, they felt burned by the, by the media, <laughs> that maybe they haven't, uh, the media haven't reflected um, what they've said and, and, the, and the rationale, but I think they also can do more. Uh, to explain, do more voter education, explain the decisions they make, uh, explain what's going on with the voter list. I think there's an actual story they can tell that I think is more reasonable than maybe in public, or at least they should put it out there. The Home Affairs Minister this, uh, with the special police. Um, I, there are a lot of questions about the special police. Who are these 40,000? What are their roles? What are their responsibilities? When we talk privately to the Home Affairs Minister, he has very reasonable notion about it. And he may have explained it to a few people, or, but they need to put something out more openly, I think, to build confidence. So it gets to the media, people hear it, and they go, okay, now I understand, I feel better about this, and I, have a, I can watch this based on that. So all of this, I think, is important to build confidence. 
um, in the credibility and the transparency of this election. Um, and I think um, the flexibility as well from the Election Commission, given the low capacity and the problems with regulations, problem with the process, that flexibility to ensure that people are able to vote on Election Day, that voter lists are as good as they can be, and that they don't disenfranchise people, they add to inclusion, will be very important. I think in days to come, so that after the election is a moment of reconciliation, people can come together and say, this was a vote of all of us. We may have, some of us may have lost, some may have won, but um, we must come together and move on to the next step of building uh, a country that is just, uh, prosperous, free, developed, uh, which is the, the job of all of us. Uh, and we in the U.S. will support that for years to come. Any message for the Burmese people in general, from the American people, about this particular moment, about this important moment? Well, I say, I mean, as I say, I think if, please do go out and vote. <laughs> I know there are a lot of problems in, in this election. I think there's uh, many uh, issues of capacity and administration of this election that, that, um, that lower, I think, enthusiasm sometimes about whether it will be indeed uh, a, a credible, reflective election of their will. Um, but this is an important moment, and people have struggled for democracy. They've struggled for the moment of voting uh, for their leadership, and I really hope that people test this moment, test this system, um, and express their voice. And always remember, this vote will be secret, that do not let anybody tell you what to do. And if they do, you can tell them whatever you want of how you voted. But you vote. This is secret. And I think it's very important for everyone to feel empowered. And it's a very important democratic mindset, to feel empowered and not intimidated, to go and express your will uh, and feel proud walking away that you have stood up as a citizen um, and, and spoken out on behalf of your country and your, and your family uh, in, uh, for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.